Hi Sujit, welcome to the next episode in our series of discussion. Today let's discuss why volatility selection is important for short strangle strategy. Right, you know short strangle is also called short wall or short volatility strategy and why is it called so? Going back to class 9 and 10 maths and stats classes, we all have read that standard deviation as a metric can never be negative and volatility is measured through standard deviation itself. So if volatility is always positive and if you want to control its impact at the portfolio or at a position level, then you have to play with the science of the weight of the instrument that is part of your portfolio. So in short strangle, because we are shorting both call as well as put, the signs of the instrument are negative. But the variable, the volatility or the terminology that we use in options trading world is Vega. Vega basically measures the impact or a change in option premium due to change in volatility. Now, because volatility is always positive, Vega by definition is always positive. But because the weights of call and put are negative and plus minus is always minus, you end up shorting the wall, right? And uh, in share market, we'll always say that uh, buy low, sell high. Now, because it's a short wall or a short uh, volatility strategy, you should always deploy short strangle or not always, but you should actually deploy short strangle only when the volatility is very high. So that is why it's called short strangle or short wall strategy. Sujit, so high wall is event specific or does it frequently happen in the market? So you uh, volatility normally increases on a regular basis. So something like uh, if election happens, that's a massive event. We'll see volatility spiking like anything. Then there are budgets that that's an annual feature. During that time also uh, volatility increases. RBI policy happens every once in every two months. During that time also, we see a, a minor increase in volatility. Uh, companies comes out with their quarterly numbers once every three months. And before the numbers are announced, we see that stock specific volatility also increases. So traders who capitalize on this high wall environment, there's a strategy, uh, short strangle is also called wall crush strategy, wherein you are getting into a high wall environment and you capture profit when the wall crushes and you get out of the market. So that's another way uh, how people do it. Okay. What number is considered as high volatility? Honestly, we didn't know and there is no one number. So what we did is we did we did a study wherein uh, historically over the last 10 years, we took the VIX and we divided it into different buckets. The buckets is basically representation of a low wall, medium wall and high wall environments. So what we did is we bucketed it between 10 to 15 when the VIX is between 10 to 15, between 15 to 20, 20 to 25 and greater than 25. So, and then we ran independent study for all the wall buckets. So what we found is the hit ratio varies from 70, 75% and goes up to 80, 88%. So in a low wall environment, wherein uh, between 10 to 15 and 15 to 20, the hit ratio, the hit ratio basically means if you have taken 100 trades out of those 100, how many are positive? So positives by total is basically how we are defining the hit ratio. Yeah. So between 10 to 15 and 15 to 20, the hit ratio is roughly 75, 77. As we go in the range of 20 to 25, the hit ratio increases by 88%. So this validates the point that if you are shorting strangle in a high wall environment, the probability of you having more positive trades is higher. But then, you know, as they say, there are no free lunches, there are trade-offs involved. So against high hit ratio, your average PNL also keeps increasing. So like between 10 to 15, your average PNL is roughly around 350 rupees. It increases to 1200 rupees between 15 to 20. And then between 20 to 25, it increases to 2300. Okay. But another metric to look at is the average drawdown. So the way we have measured drawdown is when you're entering into short strangle, you are locking in the premiums that you will receive. So when you are shorting an instrument, market gives you the premium. Right. So that premium is your income right. and it accrues to you provided you are able to hold on to your short strangle till the time of expiry. Yes. Now, from the point of entry till expiry, the way option prices or option premiums have moved is in a low wall environment, the drawdown goes up to 160%. That is between 10 to 15, the drawdown is around 160%. Between 15 and 20, it's 135 percent and between 20 to 25, it's only 92 percent. But despite that, if you see the drawdown goes up to 100 percent, right? Now, typically, 
if people are able to hold on to their positions that if they know that the average pnl is positive and they can ride through that average draw down period and go till expiry they will be able to realize the average pnl which is the number that we spoke about interestingly we also looked at it in a period when the uh, wix is greater than 25 and we split it between the covid and a non covid period we all know during covid period wix uh, went up to 30 35 went up to 80 uh, percent so what we did is the high wall environment are greater than 25 we split between non covid and covid period so in a non covid period we, at 20 to 25 range when the hit ratio was 88 at greater than 25 it fell to 73 percent which basically means that the increase in hit ratio is not linear that if you keep increasing uh, your uh, short strangle deployment in a high wall environment you will end up getting a higher hit ratio and higher pindle that's not the case so it's actually a u-shape so from 10 to 15 to up to 20 to 25 your hit ratio is increasing and greater than 25 it falls yes and that is the case both in a COVID as well as non-COVID environment. It's not that only in case of COVID your hit ratio is falling. Even in a non-COVID environment, if you are deploying short strangle with a wall of greater than 25, you still have a lower hit ratio. Right. And this lower hit ratio impacts your average PNL as well. Right. So even the average PNL, which was increasing from 350 to 1200 to 2300 from as we move from 10 to 15 to 20 to 25, it actually turned negative as you moved from uh, 20 to 25 to greater than 25. That is, your uh, average PNL moved from positive 2300 to negative 1600. Yes. Yeah. And in case of COVID, it went up to negative 5000. Wow. Yeah. And if you think about it intuitively, it makes a lot of sense because a high volatility does give you high premium, but it also increases the possibility of prices moving in wide range. You know, and in short strangle, you don't want your strike prices to be breached by the prices. But if price is fluctuating at a very high pace, and that's what gives rise to high volatility, the possibility of your strike prices getting breached also increases. So that's what I said, there are no free lunches. If you are getting a better average PNL, there's a possibility of you end up uh, getting a, a higher drawdown or a higher negative number as well. So the drawdown that was 92% for 20 to 25 bucket increases to 211 in greater than 25 bucket for a non-COVID period. And during COVID period, it increases to 271%. Another two very important metrics are number of times you have fallen short of your margin money, right? So if you don't have enough margin money to enter into a short strangle, you cannot deploy short strangle. So in a low wall environment, that is from between 10 to 15, the money added is five times, which means five times you have fallen short of minimum margin requirement. That reduced, reduces to three times between 15 to 20, and interestingly, between 20 to 25, there had not been a single instance in the last 10 years where you had to put in extra money to meet the margin requirement. Now, again, as you go greater than 25, the number of times you have added money is two. Same for non-COVID as well as the COVID period. So you see, in all the matrices, there is a limiting condition that you keep increasing up to a certain point and after that, it uh, falls further. So your sweet spot is anywhere between 15 to 20 to 20 to 25 is where you should consider deploying short strangle between this wall range. However, the downside is you will not have enough number of trades to enter into. For instance, between 10 to 15, you get only 70 instances where you can deploy short strangles. And this, uh, and this increases to 95 uh, in case of 15 to 20, but reduces to 42 in case of 20 to 25. And as you go above 25, you only get 15 such trades. Now imagine in last 10 years, if you are doing only 15 or 40 trades of short strangle, I mean, you will question that, should I sit out of the market for so long? But the point is that uh, in a low wall environment, there are other strategies you should consider, right? And in a high wall, short strangle is, uh, gives you a high probability setup, provided you are able to manage your uh, average drawdowns. Uh. So Sujik, two questions over here. One is the total number of trades don't add up to 120. Is there any overlap between these two buckets? Yeah, that's right, Amanshu. So the way we have run the study is at the start of expiry period, we measure the volatility range. So if let's say during the start of the period, if the volatility is between 10 to 15, you enter into a trade and it gets bucketed as a low wall environment. But in the same expiry, as you move forward, if the wall increases from 10 to 15 to 15 to 20, 
you take another trade between 15 to 20 and it falls in the 15 to 20 bucket. So what happens is even though your expiry is same, one trade is appearing in 10 to 15 bucket and another trade between 15 to 20. And that is why you see that in one expiry you have more than one trades. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Second question, can the average drawdown be managed by stop loss? Yes, you can. But again, <laughs> there is a trade off. So there are multiple ways in which you can manage your drawdown. Stop loss, what it does is it brings is, brings in discontinuity in your trade in the sense that you have booked your loss and you have moved out of the market. The better way which I prefer is you have a defined risk strategy in the sense like whatever your stop loss range is, but for the same range, you buy uh, another instrument in the same uh, direction. So if you have shorted a call, buy another call with the similar stop loss range that you would want to put in as a stop loss mechanism. The benefit you get is you don't stop out and get out of the market. So your continuity of the trade uh, uh, goes on. What it means is, let's say if your particular strike price has been tested, right? But you know because you have a buying leg over there, your risk is defined and you don't want to get out of the market. In stop loss, you would have gotten out of the market. And after that market reverses, you will enter into another trade to uh, recover your realized loss. But in case of a defined risk, your loss is still unrealized, right? So as the market reverses, you have the flexibility of removing your hedge, uh, hedge uh, instrument that you have bought or if you have turned into profit, you book your profit and move out. So yes, you can manage your drawdown. Stop loss is one way, but I would prefer converting it into a defined risk strategy. All right. Sujit, I have an interesting question over here. Option prices are impacted by a lot of other variables. Does this study only consider volatility or all the other variables as well? That's a very good question, Imanshu. So before I answer this, let's see what are the variables that impacts option prices. Broadly, there are three major important variables that uh, impacts your option prices. One is the prices of the underlying. Second is the time to expiry. And third is the implied volatility that is expected to play out. Now, the price of the underlying is sign dependent in the sense like when the prices goes up, the value of call increases, but the value of put decreases. And when the price of the underlying falls, value of put increases but the value of call decreases which basically means that if you are shorting both call and put and their signs are flipping they both cancel out each other right so you are delta hedged in case of short strangle provided you are equidistant from the spot price if you are not equidistant then there will be some exposure you will have for the underlying yes how far time to expiry is concerned we all know that from the date on which you have entered into short strangle till the expiry as you move forward the time difference will only reduce it can never increase right which basically means with every passing time the value of premium will fall it can never increase because of time so which and we call it theta in uh, technical jargon so theta always has a constant negative sign it can never be positive something like volatility which we discussed that yeah. volatility is always positive theta is always negative yes so if you look at all the three variables, when you deploy short strangle, your delta gets hedged out. Your theta is positive because theta because time always has a negative impact on prices, but because you are shorting it, it starts becoming a positive. It starts accruing to you. Whereas volatility, because you are shorting it, it uh, as the volatility increases, you, are, you end up into a loss because you have reversed the relationship. So on an overall basis, only thing you need to manage is volatility because delta is hedged. Theta is only accruing to you. It's working only in your favor. So you don't have to look at theta. And uh, volatility is something that you have to manage depending upon if the volatility is increasing or decreasing, which we spoke about in the drawdown case. So in this study, the impact of delta, theta and vega all are combined together. In which case, when we are looking at stats on each wall bucket, because delta is hedged only at the time of entry. Once you have entered and this market starts moving, you start getting exposed to delta as well. So all those impact are built into the study. Sujit, one last question. Where can we find India VIX on share market portal? Well, uh, you just need to log on to share uh, market web or app and there's a search button. If you simply search India VIX over there, you will find it. And I think currently it's quoted at 24 or something. Sujit, this discussion has been really helpful in understanding how volatility impacts short strangle strategy. Thank you very much for sharing all these knowledge tidbits with us. Thank you. Thank you.
Investments in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all the related documents carefully before investing.